If this is the first time at meeting me, I want to take a minute to introduce myself. I'm Jennifer Tamborski, and I am your guide on this adventure that we're going to call launching. I'm a digital marketing strategist and an NLP coach and trainer, and I seriously have a passion for helping business owners grow their business, increase their revenue, and scale their impact. I'm also a mom of three practically grown adults that are pictured here on the screen and a wife. So I know a lot about the juggling act and this crazy ride we call entrepreneurship. A little background on me. I actually started my business about 20 years ago when my middle son was born and spent those first early years navigating the chaos of motherhood while also really wanting to help people. Honestly, that is the joy I get is when someone has that aha moment or really does understand how to get their business to the next level makes me so very excited. So I launched a digital marketing agency about a decade ago. And I spent the last decade running a multi six figure digital marketing agency. So it really did give me a front row seat to the roller coaster that is this industry of marketing. And trust me, I have heard and felt the overwhelming sense of being lost in this ever changing maze of marketing from my clients. Honestly, if we're talking about marketing in general, you might be feeling that same sense of overwhelm and not really understanding what to do first or next. So I've become the person that business owners come to when they're stuck, when they're wondering about what do I do first? How do I get there? What's next? Whether it's lead generation or they feel like they're treading water and just not getting to that next level, or maybe they've gotten to one level and they're looking to go to those seven figures. My clients often describe me as their digital marketing go-to. I I actually pride myself on being a bit of a marketing geek because it is my job and my passion to understand all of the complexities of marketing. One of the biggest game changers that I've witnessed for, for several of my clients is the power of launching. And launching isn't just about a one-time event. It's an opportunity really to skyrocket your brand visibility, to position position yourself as an expert, and to create a buzz that can lead to real sales. Um, I often tell the story of Kathy, who felt stuck at a plateau in her business. So I helped her create a launch of a live event that actually took her business to seven figures. What that launch, as well as many others, um, showed me is that with the right strategy, you're able to not just slightly grow your business, but massively change what your business is doing. That's the power of a launch when done right. It's not just about sales. It's about creating impact. It's about empowering your audience. And it's about building a business that stands the test of time. So... Today, we're going to dive into launching, and we're going to start with Launch 101, why you need a launch, what is a launch? So the basics of what exactly is a launch, a launch is kind of like creating an event. It's maybe if we correlate it to maybe a wedding or a big celebration, you're not just kind of tiptoeing out into the world, letting people know that you are a coach or you're a consultant or you have a new product or service or solution to offer. You are actually building anticipation. You are creating excitement. You're creating a sense of urgency that makes people want to be a part of your launch, but also a buyer for you. And a well-executed launch can set the stage for a product, service, or solution that people not only want, but they talk about for a very long time. So when we're looking at launching, this is a multi-step process. So before you decide that launching is even right for you, you want to take a second and really ask yourself some, some questions. 
because launching has pros and cons to it. Honestly, the pros of launching, you are able to create a huge buzz and often boost sales significantly. Um, the client I was talking about earlier created in one launch, she created $250,000 in revenue. And in another launch, she created almost a half a million dollars in revenue. So it is possible to do those types of things. So you're able to also position yourself as an expert in your industry. But there are some cons to launching. Launching does require a lot of prep work. It also requires you building your audience, creating content, developing a marketing strategy that's actually going to succeed. Sometimes people can get really burned out on launching. Because it takes so much time, energy, and effort, it can often feel like a pressure valve where you feel like if this doesn't succeed, something as bad is going to happen. And no matter how accurate our strategy is or how great our, our content is, you never know what the results of a launch are going to be until you've actually executed them. Now, once you've done one or two, you can definitely determine what your next one will be. But that first launch, that's gonna be definitely something of a learning experience. So the questions you want to ask before you dive head first is, are you ready to commit the time and energy needed to successfully launch your business? Do you have an audience that's ready and able to buy from you? If not, are you willing to build that audience? And how much time do you have in order to do that? Also, what is the specific goal for this launch? Are you trying to build more authority? Are you trying to drive more sales? Are you trying to gain visibility? Are you launching something new in your business that you've never done before? Understanding that will also help you create those metrics that help you decide whether or not your launch has been successful. And then... Once you've decided launching is good, like it is something that you really want to do, it's about creating a realistic timeline. A successful launch honestly doesn't happen overnight. I know you've seen those gurus out there that say, you know, I, I launched in 24 hours or whatever. And they might have. But a successful launch when done right generally takes two to three months to plan, prepare and execute. This window of time gives you enough time to grow your audience, to build anticipation, to engage your audience, to make sure everything is running smoothly. So when we're talking about that launch timeline, you really want to start with like one, month one or two is about building awareness. It is about warming up your audience, building your audience if you don't have one, growing it so that you have someone to launch to. That is one of the biggest mistakes that people make around launching is often they launch into an audience that doesn't exist. Their, their audience may not be buyers or they may not have the resources to buy this new product, service, or solution. So really having that time to create an audience that's going to buy from you is essential. And then around launch month three, you are creating that launch prep, the pre-launch prep. So that's really focusing on getting people to attend whatever your thing is, whether it's a challenge or a webinar or an event, um, a live event or a virtual event, all of these things. In month three, you're really bringing people in to that. And then that last month is all around go time. It's all around the launch itself. So making sure that you have things like a strong, clear message, that maybe you have some early bird bonuses within your launch strategy to get people to start buying, or that you're engaging with your audience through emails and social media is critical. Really being able to execute this launch timeline is essential to having a good launch. 
if you shorten it two months, too much, and I will say you could shorten it by a month, like you can do three months instead of four months. But if you try to turn this around in 30 days, I guarantee you that A, you are going to burn yourself out with the amount of work and B, it most likely will not be successful unless you already have a really strong audience behind you. So keep in mind when you're thinking about launching that you have the time in place to do it. Our next area that you want to focus on is really your audience and your platform. And I will say, if you guys have attended any of my trainings this past year, most of them kind of lead you into a launch. It, they all teach you the different aspects that you need to build out in order to have a successful launch. Things like building an audience where quality trumps quantity. A really small, engaged audience is far more valuable than having a million followers on social media. An engaged audience of followers are more likely to interact with your content, to share your message, and most importantly, to buy from you. These are the people who generally care about what you're offering. And they already see you as a trusted expert. So if you're launching something new, having that audience that is already engaged is so valuable. And so is growing your email list. Honestly, it's one of the most critical pieces of your business in general. Because you control that list. Unlike on social media, where you're relying on the algorithms to show your content, an email list is are people who already know and like you. They may or may not trust you yet. That might be something that you're working through on the email list itself. But it is a direct line of communication with your audience. So make sure that you have an active and engaged email list. And then the last piece of the audience and platform is really understanding which platform is right for you. Choosing the right platform it's going to help you engage with your audience more than anything else. Obviously, because as we just talked about with the email list, we want to move them off of that platform as quickly as possible so that you control the communication. However, understanding where your audience sits and how you can communicate with them is going to be critical to really getting those right customers in front of your launch. Crafting an irresistible offer is honestly the biggest thing that you can do for your business, whether it's through a launch or not. A great offer isn't just about your product, service, or solution. I think what a lot of people misunderstand about an offer is that you are great. I, I had a conversation with my client the other day about this. He's like, before he started working with me, he was very much in hiding. He figured he's a great coach. He's amazing. And he is amazing at what he does. And people will find him. Reality is, is we're not living in the field of dreams. Just because you build it does not mean they will come. So creating an offer that actually speaks to your audience is much more important than being able to show how good you are at something. It has to fulfill their wants and desires and needs or solve their problem or their pain point. Your audience should be able to immediately understand what you're offering, why, what its benefits are, why they should want what you are offering them. It should also be incredibly valuable to them. A launch oftentimes is a free offer. Sometimes people launch with a micro offer of like a $97 event or maybe a higher ticket event. Either is fine, but it has to be valuable enough for someone to invest their time, their energy, their effort, and their money into what it is you offer them. This top of the funnel offer of a launch generally leads to your big product, service, or solution. That thing you do that's more important than anything else. 
all of your offers should also provide that transformation, the result that your client is going to get from you. These pieces of an irresistible offer will help you to easily attract clients, again, whether it's through a launch or whether it's one-on-one and you're just out there knocking on doors. Either way, being able to clearly articulate what it is you do, how you help them in a way that connects with them and brings them into your world is the essential piece. And when it comes to launching, oftentimes incorporating things like bonuses will help you to create that limited time offer, that reason for them to buy now instead of later. The next step in a launch is creating a minimal viable funnel. I want to say this as clearly as possible. You don't have to be complicated. Your process, your funnel, your marketing process does not need to be complicated. You simply need some type of either lead generation form, whether that's a landing page to a form or it's something else. You need a sales page, obviously, because that's the whole point of this is to get sales and to get revenue. And then some type of order form or some way to fulfill that they're they're filling out and giving you their information. Creating a very simple funnel is often the best way to launch your product, service, or solution. Keep it as simple as possible. The more complicated you get, the harder it's going to be for you in the long run to maintain. And then when you're thinking about this funnel overall, make sure that you have a clear storyline, a clear customer journey that goes through this. What problem are you solving? How are you going to solve it? What's your solution? What is the journey that your clients need to go through or your potential clients need to go through in order to be ready to buy from you? And make sure every page has a clear call to action on it. When we talk about customer journeys, I want us to be really clear that oftentimes our clients need to know, do, feel, or think something specific before they're ready to buy. Understanding that piece will help you to grease the wheels, if you will, to really make this a smooth process from cold to warm to buying. And that's really the whole purpose of marketing in general and specifically in launching. Lead generation strategies. There are two basic ways to generate leads. You either had paid or you have organic. Paid traffic has huge benefits. They're faster. You get to target really well who it is that you're trying to reach. They're scalable. They give you great information. All of those metrics that we want to look at to see if our messaging is landing, all of that. And there's also some cons when it comes to paid advertising. It can get expensive, especially if you don't necessarily know what you're doing when you're running them, which means if you're planning on hiring an agency or a um, or connecting with someone to help you or taking a course or whatever that might be to really understand how to do it, there's definitely a learning curve when it comes to pay traffic. So keep that in mind if you think about using it within your overall marketing strategy or specifically your launch strategy. On the organic side of things, this is more about content marketing and social media engagements and SEO. It can be a whole lot more cost effective because honestly, you're just committing your time. It also helps to build trust on a longer term schedule rather than 
Oftentimes paid traffic is cold to hop on my email list. So there's a lot more trust building that can go along with organic. It can be sustainable and something that's easy for people to do over a long term. However, the cons of it is you definitely have much slower results. So if you're looking at a launch and using organic traffic, you really need a following on social media already. You need people that have already connected with you and are ready to take that next step. Otherwise, you're slowly building your organic reach and that can take months. And sometimes, depending on whether or not you've dialed in that messaging well, it can take years. It's also more labor intensive than ads are. It requires regular content generation, regular social media engagement. It requires, if you're using SEO, that is also a different step. So it can be time consuming. So when you're choosing between paid and organic, Consider your budget and your timeline and how quickly you need to build your audience. Most often, what I suggest is a combination of both. Having a really effective strategy for both can help you to really grow your audience in a way that's healthy for you long term. On the kind of organic side, it's definitely on the less expensive to potentially free side is the use of other people's audiences. Honestly, this is one of my favorite um, topics when it comes to my clients who may not have the budget yet for paid traffic. That is reaching out to your networking partners, your power partners, those people that are in front of your audience, but do something different than what you do. And working out some type of deal to work with them, whether that's JV marketing or affiliate marketing, or may just be a trade. They launch into your list, you launch into their list. Those types of propositions can help you to really create um, marketing and reach audiences that you may not have before at a very low cost and sometimes no cost. But it does work faster than necessarily straight organic marketing on social media or through the internet. I also wanted to really touch base about that pressure, anticipation, those types of things that really do help you to focus. So things like scarcity. I know that there's a really big um, sometimes fear around feeling sleazy or um, or salesy when it comes to using pressure in order to bring in buyers. Honestly, things like scarcity or bonuses or time scarcity actually help to push people into buying. If they don't have a reason to buy, if their reason, whether that reason is, if you don't buy soon, your life is gonna continue to spiral, or that reason is buy because I have these bonuses in place that will really help you, it's going to create an emotional reaction to them. And people buy based on emotion. They do not buy based on the um, basic layout of what it is that you're offering. People buy because they really want or need your product, service, or solution. And if you can psychologically give them a reason to buy now instead of later, you are much more likely to have a successful launch. That's the thing around launching. There's a time period involved, usually around seven days, where day one is your training, whether that's a webinar or it's a challenge or whatever that might be. And day seven is cart closing. There's a timeline that helps to pre prepare them with that um, scarcity. If they don't buy now, they're not going to get access to it until you launch again. There are some people out there that do this incredibly well. I don't know if you guys know who Amy Porterfield is, but that woman launches every quarter a different 
product, service, or solution. And every quarter, it is only open once a year. So if you don't buy, you have to wait a whole other year. Talk about creating a level of scarcity or a level of desire, that fear of missing out. Being able to create that within your launch is incredibly important. The second piece of this that I wanted to touch on is anticipation. And that is where your pre-launch content comes in. It's creating excitement and a buzz. And if we go back to that wedding scenario, that days up to a wedding where your bridesmaids are really excited about it and your parents are excited about it and it's this big party and event, that's what you want to create with your content. Really creating something that um, connects with them in a way that they want to show up for your training, for your event, for whatever it is that you're launching to begin with. Oops, I accidentally du duplicated that one. Once you've created this entire process, this whole launch, and you've actually launched, the next thing that we do is evaluate the launch. Because how do we know it worked if we don't actually take the time to evaluate it? So you want to make sure that throughout the process, you've actually set up pieces that you are going to track. Some things can be like your sales metrics. How many sales did you get? Your uh, lead generation. How many leads did you get at what price point? And then how many of them turned into sales? That also can dive into, did your ads work? Or did your organic traffic work? Or did your um, connection to a partner, a, a other people's audience work better? Understanding where people came from and who bought is going to tell you more about how to do it again and make it even more successful next time. You also want to look at things like your email engagement. Is the content you put out there working? Are people clicking on your emails? Are they clicking on whatever that next step is that you're asking them to do? Are they engaging with your content online? All of those pieces can help you decide whether or not your message is really hitting the mark long term when it comes to launching. That is oh, critical. And... Don't you hate when technology kind of goes awry? <laughs> so that information is really critical to making your launch successful long term. Realistically, being able to assess these pieces will help you to grow a launch successfully long-term. The other piece that I want to share is also after the launch, taking time to decompress because launching can be incredibly stressful. It can be exhausting and it can really overwhelm you on a long-term strategy. So being able to really take some time to decompress is also incredibly important. Now, I know I went through that really fast and I did it for a very specific reason because I know there's lots of questions and there is so much involved in launching that I wanted to make sure we had enough time to actually ask all of the questions. Um, on the screen, I have a link to my strategy session. It is free. I promise you will walk away with one thing that you can do right now to help you grow your business. And it's also a good way to talk strategy and talk launching with me if you have additional questions. The other thing that I'm popping into the um, chat is 
are uh, is actually a checklist. This actually goes over just about everything I went over within the um, training itself and allows us and allows you to kind of go back through and create your own launch in your own timeline.